In the wide world of youth athletics, everybody has experienced that dad. You know, the dad who takes just a little too much personal pride in the sports achievements of their kid. Whether you experienced it personally to some degree, or caught a glimpse of some other poor soul getting dressed down in the parking lot after a Little League game. Parents living vicariously through the lives of their children is certainly not a new phenomenon. Stage moms, coach dads, there's countless examples of parents pushing their children towards attaining achievements they couldn't or didn't have the chance to. However, I think we can all agree that there is a fine line between yelling at the refs of a high school soccer game and deciding from the moment your son is born that he's going to be acutely and obsessively molded into the greatest quarterback of all time. So today, I want to talk about the story of Todd Marinovich and his father Marv, who went further than any sports dad ever had to shape his son's athletic career, and to be completely honest, didn't really care to consider the scars he would have to leave on his son and family in the process. But before we get into some topics that may end up getting this video, I'd like to take a quick second and thank Factor for supporting this channel. If you hadn't heard about them until now, Factor is a meal prep delivery service that takes the work out of healthy eating by delivering fresh, dietitian approved meals directly to your doorstep. You tell them which nutritional preferences you're interested in and how many meals you want weekly, and then that's as complex as it gets. Just pop your never frozen meal in the oven or microwave and you're ready to eat. I checked out their vegetarian selection this time and really appreciated just how well seasoned and fresh the ingredients were, and their plant-based smoothies make for a perfect meal when you're on the go in the morning. This tropical fruit one is kind of like a healthy pina colada. So if you're interested in checking out Factor and their rotating menu of 25 plus options weekly, head to go.factor75.com slash STE130 and use code STE130 to get an insane 130 bucks off of your first six boxes. That's code STE130 at the link down below to get $130 off and kickstart a whole new meal plan routine with just a couple of mouse clicks. So one last thank you to Factor for supporting the channel, and now let's get back to the video. Marv Marinovich was a star Ironman player for the USC Trojans back in 1962, captaining the line on both sides of the football as the team steamrolled their way to an undefeated national title season though it is worth noting he was ejected in the Rose Bowl for elbowing the opposing QB in the back of the head. Needless to say, the man was pure violence in the trenches, and as a result was drafted late by both the NFL and AFL that year, ultimately signing a contract with the AFL's Oakland Raiders. When Marv finally reached the pros, he made a commitment to be bigger and stronger than any man who lined up opposite him, and to do that developed an obsession with the heaviest and most intense weight training program he could imagine. Before modern training knowledge, this was kind of the way to go, but Marv pushed himself so hard with so little recovery time that his body cracked under the pressure, and what he once hoped would be a dominant football career dissipated into just a single recorded play on the field. Now that he was forced to walk away from the game, Marv began to study what exactly went wrong with his ideology, delving into training methods found in the Eastern Bloc of the Soviet Union. What he found was that many of their strongest athletes in the world emphasized proper recovery and a need for flexibility to generate more explosive movement, elements that were a completely alien concept to most athletes in the United States. So maybe it was too late for Marv to implement this philosophy on the field, but in his newfound purpose as a strength and conditioning coach with a son now on the way, he saw the perfect opportunity to validate not only this new training outlook, but also in some ways the unceasing what-ifs that would still haunt him about his injury-shortened career. On Independence Day of the year 1969, Todd Marinovich was born, but before he had even left the womb, he was already chosen to be Marv's dedicated science experiment, to see just how good an athlete could be if he was raised in the perfect environment. Todd's lifelong training would begin nearly the moment he was brought home from the hospital. At one month, Marv stretched out his arms and hamstrings daily. When he began to teethe, Marv fed him pieces of frozen kidney to up his nutrient intake, and when Todd was first beginning to stand on his own, Marv moved him over to a balance beam to increase the challenge. He would learn to throw with both hands and kick with both feet, and on his fourth birthday, he ran four miles in just 32 minutes. 
When it finally came time for organized sports to begin for his age group, his father told him what he'd been aiming him towards his whole life, that if he wanted to, he would make him the best quarterback to ever play football. And of course, what kid is going to say no to that? So in Marv's mind, that was the green light, and he began to assemble a team to perfect every element of Todd's game from the moment he learned to throw a spiral. As he grew, so did his team of advisors, one each for speed training, strength, agility, body control, endurance, even a specialized coach to improve his peripheral vision so his pocket awareness would be immaculate. As bonus confirmation, Todd actually fell in love with the game of football during the early stages of this insane process. But while Marv was seeing positive results at a young age, that process began to take a darker turn with every passing year. With such a laser-focused path for your child planned out in your head, Marv had no problem being a complete tyrant. He even said so in his own words. Todd played and excelled at multiple sports, but he learned immediately that if he didn't excel at every game and practice he attended, his home life would grow significantly worse as a result. When he underachieved at a basketball game at 9 years old, Marv made him run alongside the car the entire way home from Huntington Beach to Newport Beach, a route that's over 5 miles in length. It also wouldn't be uncommon for the windshield to need to be wiped down the next morning, due to just how much spit Marv threw onto it while yelling. Physical violence wasn't uncommon either, both against members of the family and random strangers who dared to challenge him. So at this point, whether or not Todd believed his dad could make him great, he was completely terrified of him. At that young age, Todd came to a pretty devastating conclusion that because his athletic dominance was the only thing that could quell Marv's rage, he felt it was his own responsibility to overachieve just so his family's life could be peaceful. And if he didn't, that whatever happened as a result was his fault. When he reached 7th grade, Todd set a goal to be the starting quarterback of modern day high school in his freshman season, something that had never been done before in the history of Southern California's hyper-competitive football landscape. But Todd wasn't poised to be an ordinary freshman, undergoing a daily gauntlet of workouts in all aspects of his game to work in tandem with his now 6'4", 212-pound frame. So Todd would make history achieving his goal, and as a lefty QB with fiery orange hair, he stood out both on and off the field. By this point, Marv's obsession with Todd's training had consumed his entire life, and after considerable strain and vehement disagreement throughout their son's upbringing, his marriage would dissolve as well, leaving Marv and Todd to move away from the rest of the family so they could pay more attention to his training. Todd certainly enjoyed the attention that high school stardom brought him, but at his core, he was never really cut out for the role of ultra jock, instead trying to escape the crushing pressure he felt in avenues like art, surfing, and more and more frequently, drugs. Todd found a remedy to the anxiety he faced daily in marijuana, and was even so well known for it in the area that fans at games would chant Marijuanovich to throw him off. Usually, this kind of revelation wouldn't be too shocking for a teenager growing up in Southern California, but the media had already become far more interested in a different depiction of the boy wonder that was Todd Marinovich. You stretched his hamstrings at one month old? He's never eaten sugar or fast food? No Saturday morning cartoons? All of a sudden, Todd was the most fascinating anomaly in football. The media decided to dub him Robo QB, America's first test tube athlete that had never wavered for even a second about the vision he shared with his father to make him the greatest quarterback in history. The most infamous line from a Sports Illustrated piece read, he has never eaten a Big Mac or an Oreo or a Ding Dong, and went on to discuss how remarkable Todd's discipline was that he had never even had a sip of Coca-Cola, let alone a beer. In reality, it was all a lie. Todd, like any other kid, would be spoiled by his grandparents when he was away from Marv's sight, but for him, spoiling meant getting to eat normal food every once in a while. However, there wasn't a snowball's chance in hell Marv was about to find that out in Sports Illustrated. So Todd lived a double life throughout high school, with profiles about his mechanical upbringing selling papers, and nearly every college team in the nation begging to have the perfect specimen join their program. But it's not like his on-field production was actually overblown. By the time he made the decision to unsurprisingly commit to his father's alma mater in USC, Todd had set the national high school record for passing yards with 9,182 in four seasons, a record that would continue to stand in Orange County for over two decades. So the resume was unbelievable, but somehow expectations for his future were even more outlandish. 
Arriving at USC for all its attention and glamour was a challenge for Todd, mostly because it stood as the first time in his life where he had to look himself in the mirror without his father directly behind him and decide if this was really the path he wanted. College life brought the first sense of freedom and identity that Todd had ever experienced, and he quickly decided multiple times over that the intense pressure of being the robo-QB everywhere he went just wasn't as enjoyable as partying or cutting class. Despite arriving billed as a walking guarantee for a national title, when Marinovich was thrust into the starting lineup in his redshirt freshman season, neither his coaches nor teammates really believed in him. But after a shaky start, Marinovich put up respectable enough stats to guide USC to a 9-2-1 season that culminated with a win over Michigan in the Rose Bowl. As overblown as the hype looked, it seemed like Marv's experiment was paying off, and from the sidelines, he was absolutely thrilled about it. But the longer that Todd spent on his own, the more he questioned what his life would look like if he hadn't been Marv Marinovich's son. His academics continued to decline, his relationship soured, and his use of illicit substances only increased, all within public view, with interview pieces that painted the 21-year-old as a conflicted and unserious competitor that lacked his father's engine. In a conversation with his mother, he confessed that he wished he could go somewhere else and be someone else, that he didn't want to be Todd Marinovich anymore. But beyond what Todd was dealing with internally, the Trojans had their own problems as a team that season, losing massive swaths of starting talent and dropping games they were meant to win, finishing 8-4-1 and, and losing in the Sun Bowl to Michigan State. For Marinovich individually, a season that began with him as a Heisman hopeful was instead defined by an ongoing feud with his head coach Larry Smith and seeing a reduction in his stats across the board. At one point, Smith suspended him an entire game for missing so many classes, and their turbulent relationship later boiled over during that Sun Bowl loss where Marinovich was seen erupting at his coach on the sideline. It was becoming very clear that Todd's head was not focused on being the perfect quarterback, but with each passing day away from the grip of Marv, it seemed that more and more that desire born of fear shrunk into the rearview mirror. The problem was, football was still all that Todd had and felt that he could ever be good at, but every drop of passion he once had for the game as a kid had been squeezed out of him like a lemon. So feeling trapped, the cycle of self-sabotage continued to expand. Just a month after the Sun Bowl, Todd was arrested for cocaine possession in the early morning hours on campus, and that would spell an instantaneous end for his career at USC. Scrambling for options, he entered a rehab program to get his charges dropped and declared for the upcoming NFL draft. Marinovich was seen as a problem prospect for obvious reasons despite the flashes of talent he'd shown on the field, but an organized workout a few weeks down the road helped to catch the eye of Al Davis, who really never met a player he couldn't give a second chance to. So the Los Angeles Raiders drafted Todd 24th overall in the 1991 NFL Draft, nine spots ahead of another raw prospect with his own obscure last name. The team who took a chance on Todd was ironically the same one who drafted the man he'd been trying to escape the shadow of, but a more impactful detail was that Todd was able to remain right at home in Southern California. If he didn't want to, he didn't have to grow up, didn't have to break the habits he'd formed that were slowly tanking his career before it even began. And so he didn't. If believers had convinced themselves that being drafted to the NFL was the wake-up call that Todd needed, they were wrong. And though he would play a total of two seasons with the Raiders, he had one, maybe even both feet out the door from the first day. Spending his rookie year as a backup allowed him to devise entire systems around passing the NFL's random drug testing, allowing him to continue to use and even expand his consumption while traveling with the team to party all across the country. But the system wasn't perfect. After only playing one regular season game and an abysmal postseason appearance following the injury of their starting quarterback, Todd was forced into rehab after the season when the urine sample that a friend gave him came back with four times the legal alcohol limit, and the Raiders organization organized an intervention to try and save the career of who they once hoped would be a franchise centerpiece. But Todd didn't have any of the answers he needed to pull himself from that incredibly dark place, why his hard work and success had only made him more miserable, and those answers wouldn't be anywhere within reach for a very long time. Year two saw the Raiders giving Todd a shot to earn the trust as a starter, but despite showing promise and even winning three straight games at a point, his lack of focus was apparent and his performances crumbled away until he had played in his final NFL game. 
Less concerned with passing the ball and more concerned with passing drug tests, Todd switched to LSD to avoid detection, but he would still fail another test late in the year, and during training camp the following offseason, he failed his third. And with three strikes, the NFL was mandated to serve a year-long suspension to Todd, so the Raiders decided they couldn't give any more line to their quarterback, and Marinovich was released. Just after his 24th birthday, the pre-selected path he'd followed since his birth was now successfully sabotaged beyond all repair. And to be honest, Todd didn't really mind. His love for football had been gone since long before he ever wore a Raiders uniform. But what would snowball into a massive obstacle was that he still had nothing to fill that void. Without football, there was no Todd Marinovich. So the cycle continued, and his drug usage escalated while his football career wilted away, to the point that the only reason he was playing, whether it was in the CFL or Arena League, was to continue feeding his addictions. Even still, there were fragments of his unparalleled potential, like a game where he threw for 10 touchdowns in the Arena League while undergoing severe heroin withdrawal. But in trying to become a normal person for the first time, he couldn't find any purpose beyond the one he didn't have a say in choosing to begin with, and that lack of identity can be such a crushing weight in a battle like addiction. So a litany of arrests continued to pile on, year by year, decade by decade, until the name Todd Marinovich was far more closely linked to drug abuse than the RoboQB with each passing news headline and talk show mocking serving as a brief reminder of what could have been. But while Todd's story is at nearly every turn a tragic one, it's not over. As of the making of this video, it seems that Todd is in a far better place and leading a life in recovery with his family, still in sunny Southern California where he dedicates his time to making art that reflects his unique perception of the world. I'll go ahead and link to his gallery in the description if you're interested in taking a look. So, at the end of this road, what was all of it worth? What lessons can be taken away? Marv Marinovich passed away in December 2020, and as far as it's been documented, never saw his methodology as a driving force between Todd's self-destructive spiral later in life. And look, I don't personally doubt that Marv Marinovich loved his children, and especially Todd, but at the same time, it's not hard to connect that he viewed his son as a mere extension of himself born to follow the teachings Marv had accumulated in his life and didn't really care to question whether Todd wanted any of it beneath a surface level. As a child, Todd was typecast into an assigned role for life by his father and later the media, and it's difficult to imagine what kind of effect that has to have on your sense of self at one of the most transformative points of your life. Todd Marinovich is still his own person at the end of the day, and the decisions of his past are still his to own. But there's no question that being raised without any capacity to accept failure as a part of life is being dealt a hand you're going to get absolutely destroyed playing. In the end, Marv Marinovich may not have shown any remorse for the scars he left on his son, but hopefully the inhuman logic of his approach will stand alone in the world of football as the most egregious warning against using your child as a prop for your personal legacy.